A mixed order reaction basically just means that the order of the reaction is going to change over time as the reaction progresses. And this can be recognized through looking at an example equation such as this one. And all you really need to be able to do is identify and understand why the order of the reaction is going to change over time. So at the beginning of the reaction, you're going to have a lot of A. There's going to be a high concentration of A. A here is one of our uh, reactants. And C here is a catalyst. So at the beginning of the reaction, there's going to be a lot of reactant because the reaction hasn't started yet or it's just begun. So there's still a lot of reactant. So since this term right here in the denominator is K3 times A, and by the way, K1, K2, and K3 are just different rate constants. It doesn't really matter where they came from or what they pertain to. Uh, the big understanding is just how to apply this equation as the reaction progresses. So uh, K3A in the denominator, this term is going to be a lot larger than K2 because we have a very high concentration of A at the beginning of the reaction. Um, so K2 becomes negligible. It's the same logic as if you were adding 0 0.0001 to like 100,000. This is pretty much negligible. It's not going to do too much to this number. So we can kind of pretend it doesn't exist. And that's what we're going to do with K2 in the denominator of this reaction at the beginning of the reaction when we have a high concentration of A. So the equation basically becomes rate equals K1 C. A, so again, C is a concentration of a catalyst and A squared up here, sorry, is the concentration of your reactant. And it's basically just going to be over K3 times the concentration of A since the K2 term is basically negligible. So here we can see, if we look at the two, uh, the numerator and the denominator, we can cancel out one of the uh, concentrations of A. So this is equal to K1 times C times A, since we had A squared in the top, over K3, since we canceled off the concentration of A in the denominator. And you can kind of rewrite this. And sorry, this isn't exactly equal. This is roughly equivalent, since we are basically ignoring this K2 term here. So uh, you're left with something that looks like K1 over K3, if we rewrite it this way times the concentration of the catalyst, times the concentration of our reactant. And this looks a lot like a first order rate law. We can pretend we have the exponent one up here. And so this looks like a first order rate law. Remember the catalyst doesn't affect the rate law at all because it's just a catalyst. Um, so we don't count the exponent that we would find on the concentration of the catalyst. And this would just be some rate constant k, since you're dividing a constant by a constant. So here we have a first order reaction. Now, this is what happens at the start of the reaction, when we have a high concentration of A. But at the end of the reaction, we're going to have a low concentration of A, since the reactants get used up as the reaction progresses. So what we can say then is basically that the rate is going to be roughly equivalent to K1 times the concentration of the catalyst times the concentration of A squared, same numerator, divided by, now in the denominator, this is going to change again. We have K2 plus K3 times the concentration of A. And since the concentration of A is very low, this term becomes negligible this time. So in this case, K2 is going to be much larger than this. And so we can basically ignore this term right here and pretend the denominator is just K2. And in this case, we end up with something that looks like K1 over K2 times the concentration of the catalyst times the concentration of A squared. And here we have what looks like a second order rate law. And this is what happens at the end of the reaction when the concentration of our reactant is relatively low. And again, this will just be some constant and the catalyst has no effect on the rate law. So here we can see that the reaction goes from first order 
to second order as it progresses, and this is exactly why it is classified as a mixed order reaction. So as long as you're able to understand this from the fraction you've got here, you're basically good to go.